Hi guys. Okay, this is one of my most popular stories on TikTok, so I think thought I put it out there for everybody. Um, it's basically my most embarrassing moment. It happened four, 15 years ago. I was working in a comedy club in Spokane, Washington, and I was in the back of the room. My opening act was on stage. I was having something to eat, a BLT and a Diet Coke, and I've got IBS. So sometimes when I have soda with food, all of a sudden I start getting a bit of a rumble down and under, you know, a lot of thunder. And I know from previous experience, I don't have a lot of time. I'm having a cold brown. So I'm like, oh my God, where are the restrooms, the toilets? And they're like, well, you got to go out of the club and down the hallway. So I didn't have my scooter at the time. So I am booking it. I am running. I'm clenching my buttocks as tightly as possible, right? And the owner's girlfriend is in the hallway. She's like, hey, Tanya Lee, I want to introduce you to my parents. I'm like, not now. So I run into the toilet uh, restroom. I get in there. There's three stalls. They're all taken. So now I'm crouched down on the ground. I'm labor breathing. I got sweat beads rolling down my face. I'm like, I've got to go number three. Luckily, the woman in the middle stall comes out, kind of a heavy set woman with the red sequin top. She sees me crouched down on the ground. I'm like, hee hee hee. So I get into the restroom, into the stall. And I pull my pants down, I'm doing a bit of a dance, right? I'm doing a bit of a dance, because I got a dilemma. How do I get on the toilet seat? Because obviously I have a system, right? What I would normally do is I would back that ass up, I would get one cheek up onto the toilet and sort of throw myself up onto it, right? Well, that's not gonna work when you're clenching your buttocks as tightly as possible. So I'm like, okay, I gotta come up with another plan, right? I gotta think ten, think ten. I'm not thinking very clearly right now because I'm under a lot of pressure. You don't think well when you're under a lot of pressure. So I'm like, okay, what are my options here? What are my options? I'm like, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll go head first. I'll go head first, and then I can sort of, you know, throw myself and twist myself back onto the toilet, right? So I had to wait for the cramp to pass. I had to wait for the cramp to pass. I'm like, oh, all right, here I'm going to do it, right? So I go running up to the toilet. I get my knee up under the seat. I thrust myself forward, and that's when my ass exploded. Oh, uh, I shot out like a party popper at New Year's, people. Just, <clears throat> I hit the door and the sides of the stall, and it just started dripping. Of course, everything was in slow motion from that point. I was like, no. It wasn't until I heard the screams of the two women on either side of me and the woman by the sink where they were like, ah, and they went all running out of the restroom that I jolted into reality, and I saw the situation. I was like, oh, my God, no. So my first instinct, right, grab a big wad of toilet paper, start wiping down the door, I'm wiping down the stalls and everything. And then it occurred to me, oh my God, I'm in here by myself, right? What if somebody comes in here and sees this shit? Ah! So I go running to the door of the restroom, I'm holding it closed going, oh my God, what am I going to do? I need some help, right? I'm like, oh, the owner's girlfriend, maybe she's still down the, in the hallway, right? So I open the door, I'm like, hey, Christine, I need a mop! So Christine comes to the door. Of course, I have to explain to her, had a bit of an accident. So I open the door. Christine walks in. She looks around, sees poop everywhere, and she's like, wah, wah. And then she takes off. I'm like, oh, my God, no, you can't leave me hanging like this. I can't do this on my own. It seemed like an eternity. It seemed like forever. All of a sudden, there was a knock on the door. Some woman I don't even recognize pops her head in and she's like, hi, I'm Gail. I'm Christine's mom. I understand you need some help. I'm like, oh, this is just friggin' great. I'm butt naked from the waist down. There's poop everywhere. I'm like, this is quite the first impression, huh? Nice to meet you. So Gail comes in, a female bartender comes in, she's got a mop. Gail now has my black pants that were on the ground. She's got them up by the sink, trying to scrape the shit splatter off them. I'm still in the stall trying to wipe it all down. I can't get the smell of poop out of my nose. Then Christine comes in. Hey, she's like, hey, just so you know, your opening act is finished. But don't worry, the owner's on stage. Killing time until you're ready. I'm like, Oh my God, I still got to go on stage. I've got to get my shit together. Because I'm the headliner, right? People actually came to see me. There is no plan B. I don't have a change of clothes, nothing. So Gail gives me back my black pants. Now they're black pants with little bits of napkin, toilet paper, and shit splatter on them. I'm like, okay, I'm a professional. The show must go on. 
I can't get the smell of shit out of my nose. So I walk back to the comedy club. I'm like trying to psych myself up. I can do this. And I walk into the club. Somebody gives the owner the old thumbs up. She's ready to go sign. So I get my introduction. I run up on stage, I get on my box, I turn to the audience, and right in the front row is the woman with the red sequin top and her two friends. We just locked eyes, their drinks spew out of their noses. I was like, hey, shit happens. Oh my God, this happened over 15 years ago, guys. And I get anxious every time I talk about it. You know, it's a real story. You can't make this shit up, you know? I think I suffer from like PTSD, post-traumatic shit disorder. Yeah, you know, but I feel like I have to get it out there, right? Because, you know, everybody's got a shit story. We all do. I'm just brave enough to tell it to the world. We've all got one. I feel like I need to get it out, you know, because I'm hoping to be big and famous one day. Well, famous, you know. And even now I can picture these three women sitting around the campfire with the grandkids talking about the day they saw a dwarf explode. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I finished the show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did. I had to do an entire hour on stage. I'm like, happy, happy, joy, joy. You know, like nothing was wrong when I was so pent up with emotion, right? I just want to burst into tears and have a shower. So as soon as the show was done, I didn't say goodbye to anybody. I just hauled ass. I got back to my hotel room. I closed that store. I burst into tears, right? I started taking my clothes off because I was going to have a shower. And I had much longer hair at the time. It was in a ponytail on the top of my head. So I reached up to grab my ponytail, pull the scrunchie out of my ponytail, and realized the entire top of my head was caked in shit. Because apparently when I was wiping down the doors, I forgot about my T-Rex arms. Yep, so there I was. I was a total shithead. Yep, true story. Enjoy.